Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha. These are the ten kinds of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Commentary, Disciples of the Buddha, which includes all of you. These are the ten kinds of patience of a Bodhisattva Mahasattva. These are the ten practices of patience of great Bodhisattvas. Sutra, at that time, universal worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva, wishing to restate the meaning of his teachings, spoke the following verses. Commentary, at that time, universal worthy Bodhisattva, wishing to restate the meaning of his teachings, spoke the following verses. He used the verses to further clarify the principles. This chapter of the Flower Adornment Sutra is called the Ten Patience. Patiences. Before people have encountered any trying circumstances, they say they can be patient and yield to others. When certain situations arise, however, they fail to recognize these states and are unable to be patient or yield. Instead, they run down the path of ignorance. The more they run, the farther they stray from the truth. As a result, their wisdom fails to manifest. China is an agricultural nation. Most people are farmers. They know they must plant the fields before they can reap the harvest. It would not be possible to harvest anything without having done the work of planting. Similarly, similarly, how do we plant our fields of blessings? We start to do various good deeds. When we have done many good deeds, small problems naturally take care of themselves. In coming to this country to propagate the Buddha Dharma, I have never told you the advantages of attending sutra lectures. The reason you listen to sutra lecture is to understand principles you didn't understand before. Then, based on those principles you learn, you can begin to make progress. Once we understand the principles, we ought to take Buddhism more seriously and constantly consider how we can support Buddhism so that it develops and flourishes day by day. You should do this not only with the Buddhism, but with other religions. Work diligently for the well-being of all citizens. Don't create any scandal. If you cause trouble and your parents hear of it, they will certainly be heartbroken. When you are not mature enough or have not developed your wisdom, you ought to go to places of learning to learn what you don't know. Once you learn some principles, you must put them into practice. However, it takes time to truly learn the principles. By analogy, you can simply plant seeds in the ground and then neglect them. If you neglect them, they will not turn out well. Turn out well. You must protect them and give them food and water. Every day we study the Buddha drama in San Francisco, yet none of you are aware of its benefits. When someone who has never heard the Buddha drama happens to hear it once, he or she finds it inconceivable, for it encompasses all principles. Let us gather the principles for all religions to study and compare them. Let us learn from other strong points to make up for our shortcomings. Let all religions help one another to flourish. We should never say to a person of another religion, Buddhism is the best. Buddhism should advocate all religions. We should promote all religions by following the principle. We proceed together without hindering each other. If you asked me my religion, I would say, mine is the religion of truth. It is the religion of human beings. It is the religion of sentient beings. It is the religion of everyone. All sentient beings can become humans, and all humans can become Buddhas. Thus, Buddhism can also be called the religion of human beings and the religion of sentient beings. We don't have to limit ourselves by insisting that we are Buddhists. Buddhism pervades all of space and the Dharma realm. We also acknowledge all religions as Buddhism. Other religions may not see it that way, but that's their business. We ought to expand our hearts to encompass all that exists within space and the Dharma realm, because it is 
it is all the manifestation of truth. Therefore, we should not discriminate between our religion and other religions. They may want to distinguish themselves from us, but we will not distinguish ourselves from from them. That's how we should go about it. Sutra, take for example a person in the world who learns of the sight of a treasure trove. The prospect of uncovering it is cause of great joy in his heart. That is what happens when the greatly wise Bodhisattva True Principle of the Buddha encounters the drama of all Buddhas, which is profound, tranquil, and markless. Upon hearing this profound drama, his mind is set at peace, free from panic and terror, free from every fear. Commentary: Universal with the Bodhisattva, in speaking his verse, makes another analogy. Take for example a person in the world who learns of the size of a treasure trove. Suppose there is a person in the world who hears of a treasure trove. If he was to discover it, he would be extremely rich. The prospect of uncovering it is cause of great joy in his heart. Knowing that he has the opportunity to find that treasure trove, he is delighted. That is what happens when the greatly wise Bodhisattva True Principle of the Buddha, who hears and encounters the drama of all Buddhas, which is profound, tranquil, and markless. Such drama is unsurpassed, profound, tranquil, and free from marks. Upon hearing this profound drama of Brahma wisdom, his mind is set at peace, free from panic and terror, and free from every fear. Upon hearing that the drama is profound, he is not alarmed. Upon hearing that it is wonderful, he is not afraid. Free from fear, he is able to enter deeply the sutra treasury and have wisdom like the sea. Sutra, the great knight in quest of body, hears this extensive sound with a mind pure and patient. He is free of doubt in this regard, mindful of the drama he has heard. In all its profound, subtle wonder, he is bound to accomplish all wisdom and be a great teacher for humans and gods. The Buddha who hears this sound rejoices in his heart and brings forth a resolute vow to seek the drama of all Buddhas. Through his delight for body, his mind is gradually subdued, and his faith made to grow. Neither opposes nor disparages the drama. Hence, when he hears this sound, in his mind patience takes root, wherein he dwells without wavering to cultivate the Bodhisattva's practices. Commentary: The Great Knight refers to the Great Bodhisattva. He is also known as the Knight with a Great Resolve. A sentient being with a great resolve for the path is also called a Great Knight. He is in quest of body. He has made the body resolve. He is pursuing the path of body, and hopes to one day reap the body fruit. Body is the path of enlightenment. It is attained when ignorance and afflictions are eradicated. In the Bodhisattva state, cultivating the profound and vast drama practice of the Bodhisattva path, he hears this profound and extensive drama sound. With a mind pure and patient, he is free of doubt in this regard. When the Bodhisattva cultivates according to the ten patiences chapter, the most important requirement is that his mind is be pure and patient, able to endure this drama practice. He cannot have the tiniest doubt about this drama practice, mindful of the drama he has heard. In all its profound, subtle wonder, he recollects and investigates the unsurpassed, profound, subtle, inconceivable, and wonderful drama he has heard. When he cultivates the drama of extensive patience and resolves to attain unsurpassed body, the path of enlightenment, he is bound to accomplish all wisdom and become a Buddha, and he will be a great guide and. Teacher for humans and gods. That is, he will be the same as a Buddha, who is a teacher and model for humans and gods. 
The Bodhisattva who hears this unsurpassed, profound, wonderful sound rejoices with reverence in his heart and brings forth a most resolute vow to seek the drama of all Buddhas. He wishes to pursue the subtle, wonderful drama spoken by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Through his delight for Bodhi, the path of enlightenment, his mind is gradually subdued. His thoughts of obstinacy, meanness, and rebelliousness are tamed, and his faith made to grow day by day. He neither opposes nor disparages the drama. He cultivates in accord with the drama. He would not defy or slander the Buddha drama. Hence, when he hears this drama sound, in his mind patience takes root. His mind develops a patient attitude wherein he dwells within wavering to cultivate the Bodhisattva's practices. He abides steadily in the state of patience and cultivates the Bodhisattva path, the six paramitas and the myriad practices. Sutra, in his quest for Bodhi, he focuses his cultivation on his path, vigorous and never retreating. He dismisses no beneficial restraints. Seeking the path of Bodhi, his mind is free from fear. Hearing the drama, he grows more vigorous in presenting offerings to the Buddhas to delight them. Commentary In his quest for the unsurpassed Bodhi, he, the great Bodhisattva who cultivates the Bodhisattva path, focuses his cultivation on his path, the path of enlightenment. Constantly and at all times, he is brave, vigorous, and never retreating from Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, and he dismiss, dismisses no beneficial restraints. The Chinese character for restraint literally means the yoke that oxen wear when they pull carts. There are many yokes that, once put over your head, prevent you from turning back and retreating. See Milali. Similarly, the Bodhisattva advances forward fearlessly and vigorously. At all times, one finds the Bodhisattva seeking the path of Bodhi, the path of enlightenment, being vigorous day and night. His mind is free from fear. He only advances, never regresses. The great length and difficulty of the path to Buddhahood does not daunt him. Hearing the drama spoken by all Buddhas, he grows more vigorous in presenting offerings to the Buddhas to delight them. The Bodhisattva constantly goes to all lands in the ten directions and makes offerings to all the Buddhas there, causing them to rejoice. Sutra, just as a person of great blessings who acquires a treasury of fine gold, carries the gold with him, fashioning it into ornaments, in the same way, the Bodhisattva, hearing the drama's profound meaning, ponders it, expanding his oceanic wisdom, and cultivates the drama of complaints. He understands to accord with the existence of dramas. He understands to accord with the non-existence of dramas. In this way, he tolerates with every drama, thus achieving an understanding of all dramas. Commentary just as a person of great blessings who acquires a treasury of fine gold carries the precious gold with him, fashioning it into assorted ornaments, ornaments and vessels. In the same way, the Bodhisattva, hearing the drama's profound meaning, ponders it and cultivates according to the drama, thus expanding his oceanic wisdom, and cultivates the drama practice of compliance with sentient beings. He understands to accord with the existence of dramas. He understands that dramas have appearances. He understands to accord with the non-existence of dramas. He also understands that dramas have no appearances. In this way, he tolerates with every drama and cultivates in accordance with them, thus achieving an understanding of all dramas. He awakens to patience with a state of mind in which no mental objects arise. Being in accord with all dharmas, he comprehends the reality of all dharmas, i.e. he sees things as they really are.